everyone. I'm Jason Sewell for you. And I'm Juliet Leiter, your host for Hawaii's Real Stories. This week, our show focuses on stunts. Right, we'll catch up with Burton Richardson, whose martial arts background came in handy while filming 1% Full in the Philippines. Film veteran Colin Fong talks about the trick to making stunts look easy on film. Then we go behind the scenes of the Hawaii Stuntman's Association with Darren Fujimori. The Cousins Brothers shot the last of the Night Marchers trilogy on the Big Island and show how they staged dangerous stunts without getting hurt. First, we go to director Burton Richardson on shooting 1% full. I've been very fortunate to train with a man named Dan Inosano, who was Bruce Lee's training partner and best friend. And I started my training there in 1980. And I've, I've actually traveled the world uh, learning martial arts, everywhere from going to Brazil for Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, uh, to Zulu villages, where I actually stayed in the Zulu village to learn stick fighting from the Zulu warriors. And wherever I could go, China and Japan, and I was able to use those things and put it into the movies. So we have realistic looking fights. They're not fantasy fights, but we get to draw from so many different sources. It's a very unique application. The stunts for 1% Full uh, were done well in advance. All the practice and such. I had a great group of guys. They trained very hard, talented martial artists. We have David Giomi, who is a longtime martial artist and instructor. We have Jarlo Ilano, who is also a longtime martial artist and an instructor with me in JKD Unlimited, as is David Giomi. And we have Scott Ishihara, who also is an instructor with JKD Unlimited and a very, very talented martial artist. And these are the guys that put in a lot of work to actually end up going to the Philippines and being in the movie. This is a drill from the Filipino martial arts that we actually used in the movie. So the idea is we're out here, and this is a method of practice, moving inside, coming closer yet. And anytime we're in there, we have the disarms and takedowns and all this sort of thing. So we use that drill, and then we put it into a little more combative mode, put it in the movie. There's something called a lock flow in the Filipino martial arts, and it's in other martial arts as well. And in the practice of it, you can go from lock to 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 another to another to another to another to another. And this is how it's really memorizing the technique. But we can draw from that, and we can again put it into a combative look and insert it into the movie. When we do fight scenes in movies, we don't want to actually hit our stunt performer because uh, they don't like it and sometimes they hit back. So. What we do is we make it look like the hit is happening. So a few things happen. One, I have to make sure that the fist goes right through the middle of his face. And depending on where the camera is, that changes where I have to put the hit. The most important thing, though, is the stunt performer's reaction. If he doesn't react on time and well, it doesn't look realistic. That's why so much training is involved. So, for example, when we're doing it, I have to make sure also that it's in the right spot. So, for example, if I go here with Scott, and I punch low and he does the head take, you can see it doesn't look like he's being hit. Or if I go too high, it doesn't look like he's being hit. But if I put it in the right direction here, it looks like he just got hit. Then, very important, is adding the sound effect. Now, we don't have sound effects here, but I'm going to do the old slap the leg trick. So I come in like this. So that makes it look more like he actually got hit. I enjoyed doing the, the fights for this because we were able to make it very realistic and use top of the line techniques from Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and kickboxing and Filipino martial arts and Indonesian martial arts and Jeet Kune Do. And it was nice because when I showed it, 
I had, uh, for example, one of the comments was from a friend of mine named Egan Inouye, who's world champion in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and in ultimate type fighting. And uh, his comment was, finally, realistic fights in a movie. <laughs> For me, very important when we're doing the fights is that it has to enhance the story. Just like a scene should have a beginning, middle, and end, a fight scene really should have a beginning, middle, and end as well. So by going through that and really knowing what the fight scene is about, it helps with the editing afterwards. We only use one camera, which meant that our stunt performers had to be really, really well prepared, so the fight was the same every single time. Take after take after take after take, same fight. Uh, the fight where you'll see all the locking and all this, we did that fight maybe 30 times. It was rigorous, rigorous, but the guys were so well trained that we were able to do it every single time the same, they cut together perfectly. When I'm shooting, I make sure I'm gonna cover these things from different angles, and there are certain parts of the fight that are very important. So I'm gonna make sure that we have those important story points covered. Just like when we make a movie, we have the certain story points of the movie covered very well. If we cover the fights well in the beginning, then when it comes to editing, I have an idea already how I'm going to edit that and then I put the fight together. And then once it's together, of course, we revise it and I show it to people, see if there's any place that they didn't understand what was going on, and maybe I go back and re-edit certain parts of the fight. That's a good process for getting good fights on film.